Very exciting news, Fujifilm has just released its new X-Series camera, the X-T5. I had the fortunate opportunity to briefly look at the camera before release. While recording this video, it was under embargo, obviously at publishing this video, it has now been released to the public, or the news of the camera has been released to the public. Very exciting, and it's kind of a good opportunity for me to have a look at the whole lineup that Fujifilm now is offering in the X-Series range. You know, they've released these cameras in pretty close sort of order or succession. We have the X-H2S, then the X-H2, then the X-T5. Now I'm hoping, uh, I know that when the X-Pro was released there was a bit of a couple of year gap between releases, but I am hoping maybe in the new year we will also see an X-Pro4 sporting the sensor that you find in both the X-H2 and the X-T5. Now when I go back to the X-T4 release, I never purchased the X-T4, I went straight to the X-Pro3. Um, I'm a photographer, I'm not a videographer, so just bear that in mind when listening to what I'm saying. It was very important that um, you know I had a camera that was very capable in what I needed it to do and the X-Pro3 actually met my needs more than the X-T4. So I remember having a conversation with someone and there was a bit of a rumor going around as to what was coming out. Uh, we were all expecting an X-H2 to come out back then and all of a sudden this X-H2 disappeared, an X-T4 appeared and the X-T4 had things like a flip out screen uh, that could rotate, a lot more video features and it almost became like a hybrid. Um, and I was a little bit shocked to be quite honest because the X-T and the X-Pro really like photography, very tactile, very sort of manually operated for, from, from a photography point of view. I didn't know how necessary these additional features were. Obviously Fujifilm was trying to still hold parts of the market where you know that they have this photography camera that's very capable video wise and they did a good job with it. The X-T4 is an amazing camera. But that's kind of the reason why I went for the X-Pro3 because I still needed to be more photography sort of centered. Where I felt that the X, uh, X-T4 was kind of trying to do both. Did it very well but for me personally I'm, as a photographer I was very much in the X-Pro sort, of, um, sort of corner. Now according to that same rumor the reason why the X-H2 didn't come out and the X-T4 did was that competitors had kind of released a very very good camera from a, a video perspective. I think Fujifilm felt that it would be too early to release the X-H2 and they'd be better off going with the X-T4 with these additional features that kind of made it a bit of a hybrid camera. And um, holding back on the X-H2 and that's why we've had this big sort of period of time between the X-H1 and the X X-H2. It's a bit feels a bit like the X-Pro as well. Between the X-Pro2 and the X-Pro3 there's a big gap where the X-T series have kind of jumped ahead and given us more options down the line. Now the good news is in my opinion is that the X-T5 is definitely moved back into the photography side. Um, it's calling back to the X-T3 styling size and just the, you know, the way the LCD works because there were many who looked at the X-T4 after owning the X-T3 and kind of thought Geez, why did you go with the flippy screen? You know, we really like the older screen, the, the one that gives you the top down bottom view and then can flip out. It's more sort of geared up for a photographer. We don't need those extra things. And obviously the videographers liked the fact that it had this flip out screen because it helped them a lot. But they were kind of like, well, the X-H1 has features that we want. The X-T4 has features that we want. And they were kind of caught between, you know, these two bodies. Um, particularly because the X-T4 was a hybrid, more of a hybrid type of camera. Now with it being more sort of sent, sort of more photography centered with an ability to do great video, it kind of frees up and opened up the opportunity for the X-H2 to shine and really become what the camera was meant to be and kind of give Fujifilm a better sort of understanding of its lineup and, and obviously helps the consumer as well because now when you walk in you kind of like, geez, should I go for this? Should I go for that? Because if I go for that, I sacrifice this. If I go for that, I sacrifice that. And it's less of a sort of this conundrum that you find yourself in um, where I think, although nuanced, as I said before, things are becoming a little bit more clearer. So that to me is probably the number one positive of the X-T5 is that they've said, no, we're not playing this hybrid game with it anymore. Yes, it, it's very capable. We've loaded it with amazing video capabilities, but this is a photography camera. And, um, and it's quite clear. It's almost like a coming of age for Fujifilm. It feels to me that they're starting to like, you know, it's, it's been a while. They've really, they've really sort of found their, their voice uh, with the X-Series, the cameras. You know, I'm really, really impressed. And uh, the X-H2, 
um, has blown me away. Like I never, I'm not really someone who, after been using the manual dials on both the X Pro and the XTs, um, I've never really thought of going back to using a mode dial camera, a controlled control dial camera. But just briefly shooting with the XH2, I was really, really impressed. And if this wasn't an option, this camera would be an amazing photography camera. I would be able to work around it very, very quickly. What's evident on all the cameras is the, is the quality of the, the workmanship that's gone into it. What's really nice about the XH range is that they've gone the more GFX kind of look, which I think is really nice. Beautiful finish is almost like a bit of a, like a satin finish to the, to the metal work. Um, beautiful boxed hard lines, nice little angles on it. Um, yeah, I just think they're really beautiful. The same as the X, X-T5. I think they've done an exceptional job with the, the craftsmanship and, and you can just see the subtleties of things that have taken the years to improve. I remember going back to the X-Pro one and I remember the X-T1. Sure, there are a lot of more plastic things and things that you can see after time would start to wear and, and they've learned. They've learned from their mistakes. I mean, this is all part of what we know when you go through the process of going from model to model. It improves and improves and there's no doubt that this is an improvement overall really beautiful beautiful camera i think those people that who not only love taking photographs and love photography who kind of and it sounds superficial but there's a lot of people out there who kind of want the photography to be kind of part of their persona you know what they want a particular look of camera on the hip when they're walking it gives them confidence you know what I mean? It's, it's, like, it's like someone who buys an older looking style motorbike and, and wants a particular leather jacket and helmet that goes with it so it has a whole look. You know, the Fujifilm have done a really good job, particularly with the XT range and the X-Pro range of giving you that nostalgic feel. And it's, here it is again. And in fact, I think, it's, I think it's better because in the X-T4 we were kind of like, oh, is Fujifilm moving away from that with its flippy screens and all these other things? And I think that they've done a really good job by taking a step forward in performance but a step back in to what worked in a more photography centric camera. Now I'm not an engineer but I imagine by giving the cameras more of a clear role that they play it allows the designers of the camera, the engineers behind the scenes to be able to sort of become more creative at least um, in each segment because if you look on the X-T5 you know the battery sits really close to the motherboard or the processor Everything's very compact next to each other. So you're not going to be able to do a 240 minute recording in 4K like you can do on the X-H2S because the camera's not meant to do that. Um, it does, have, as I said, has really good video capabilities, but it's not a videographer's camera. It's a photographer's camera that does video. So it remains compact. It's a lot more compact than these bodies, which has its perks. From, me, from my perspective, the thing I like about the X-T range and the X-Pro range was that they are compact, very compact. And um, you know, combined with really, really fast prime lenses, I've actually got a really compact um, setup that I travel with for my work. So that was very important to me. It was more important than being able to record for 240 minutes like the X-H2S does. So you can understand now giving them clear roles, you don't have to try and make the X-T5 a bigger camera than it necessarily needs to be just so you can get an extra feature for video. So I think that's a good thing. Now performance wise, this camera is incredible. It really does pack a punch. I mean, to go from 26.1 megapixels to a 40.2 megapixel, that's a big jump. Uh, we're not talking smaller amounts here. We're talking a substantial jump. And obviously <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind, I'm not a pessimist, but uh, just practically I'm thinking what is the noise performance going to be like now I haven't done extensive testing on it but so far it's it's really good I don't see any issue with it and plus you get the benefit of a higher resolution image so yeah I think this is this is incredible that now we have this option I mean I recently did a shoot uh, I was in Spain and I got the opportunity to shoot and um, with actually my entire range. I actually got to use the GFX and the X-Series on the same job. So at certain times I was using the X-Series, um, my X-T and my X-Pro. And it did the job beautifully in a particular part of the job. And then another aspect I had to use the GFX just from a resolution point of view. Now, what you know, I've always shot them either that or that. But when you shoot them side by side, you can really see... Um, each you know strengths and weaknesses of each system and over the years the X series range really has become a lot nippier and faster than I, I actually give it credit for going back to the original ones like the X-T1 and the X-Pro 
they really are a quick little nimble camera it shoots very quick I mean, especially if you go from the gfx in certain situations i'm thinking i would never shoot that again with a gfx the x series is beautiful and does the job so when you get the opportunity like i have to use the whole range i don't look at one as weaker than the other they actually have very definite roles that they play there's no point getting a gfx if you're shooting a certain style of shooting if you're doing events if you're doing more fast paced stuff more reportage you can get beautiful stuff when you get it but you're going to miss a lot uh, it's just the nature of the bigger sense of the bigger lenses these cameras are incredibly nippy um, and obviously on this job i was using the x pro which is the old generation to this because it had the same sensor as the xt4 so the the brief test that i've done with this and the x series the xh sorry the xh2 the, it really has stepped up again like i I thought I'd just sort of see slight increments in uh, autofocus performance and snappiness, but these really are a lot quicker. I know there's different ways of using the system. I know there's different ways of focusing and, and you know, releasing the shutter. And I've, I've never really been a back button uh, autofocus uh, person. I've always used the shutter release to do both focus and image taking. I've always done that. It's just, it's habit. So someone at Fujifilm just said to me, listen, just try it out, set up the back button autofocus so that your shutter release is only shutter release. Uh, set up continuous autofocus with tracking, either eye tracking or face tracking or one of the new features that they have, animals and so on. And um, so don't, don't interrupt that track with obviously a pull of focus. Just let it pull and when you're ready, hit the shutter. Man, I couldn't believe the hit rate that I was getting. I mean, I'm, I'm not really a face detect and eye detect. I'll tell you why I don't use those things because in the situations that I shoot, let's just say I'm doing an event and I'm on a stage or I'm, sh I'm photographing a speaker or even when I'm doing a wedding or a portrait shoot, sometimes I use the person closest to me as sort of to fill the frame to create an out of focus sort of pattern and then to the side of them is the actual main subject that I'm photographing. When you're using the auto, auto face detect and the eye detect, it's just going to pull on everything and you don't get that creative control. So for me, I've always been, that's where I want the focus, this is where I don't want the focus and so on. But like just testing it out just briefly, uh, letting it just continuous track, it, it really is a step up now, properly step up. This is, I, I, I would go as far as to say now it's, uh, and I've used a few systems in the last few months, um, that it's focusing as quick as any other system out there. Uh, and it's accurate, accurate when it comes to those auto features like face detect, eye detect, animal and things like that. It really, really, really is impressive. I'm not, I'm not just saying that. The X-H2S, um, like those of you into bird photography and things like that, even though it's a low res sensor, being a stack sensor, it performs better in certain situations and it's, its performance is even quicker than you find on the X-H2 and the X-T5 when it comes to tracking in certain situations. So as mentioned before, the X-T5 in my possession is a pre-production model. So not fully functional and the firmware needs to be updated, but I can confirm the following features. It has a 40.2 megapixel sensor, the same that is found in the, the backside illuminated sensor that is found on the X-H2. It shoots at the same frame rate as the X-H2. It can shoot a mechanical shutter rate of 15 frames per second, which is really good. It also has the seven stops of internal, internal body image stabilization, the IBIS. It has a pixel shift feature. It gives 160 megapixel pixel shift multi-shot. The electronic shutter just blows my mind. It is now up to one in 180 thousandth max shutter speed in electronic. It also externally records Apple ProRes RAW and Blackmagic RAW. And up to 13 plus stops of dynamic range in F-Log2 for video. And it can shoot at 6.2K, a 30p, 10-bit, 4.2 video. Although the X-T5 EVF is not the same as the X-H2 and the X-H2S, I didn't really see too much of a difference. Same magnification. Although the X-H2 and the X-H2S has a 5.76 million dot um, resolution, the 3.69 on the X-T5 was more than sufficient. It definitely has been a performance step up on the X-T5. I found the shutter release to be quite nippy quite sensitive, which is quite nice. And as you get used to it, it gets easier to use. Uh, nice, pleasant sound as well. Quite a quiet mechanical shutter. And the autofocus tracking and autofocus in general was, I think, really, really good. Definitely Im improved. I found the contrast situations, especially backlit situations, I was finding focus with, without any issue. The X-T5 has two card slots, both are SD cards. Whereas the X-H2 and the X-H2S also have two card slots, one being SD and one being CF Express Type B, obviously for increased transfer rates 
and obviously they're with high capacities up to two terabytes in one card which is really handy especially for that high-res video and those long recording sessions that you can now do on the xh2 and the xh2s you know pushing and pulling the raw file i think was as good as before if not better in some situations i think noise is really well handled uh, it's hard to evaluate how good the noise um, performance is but uh, definitely uh, the same if not better than before which is amazing considering there's a high resolution sensor um, i'd be interested to know how they do that those of you who use the xt range currently or or interested in sort of more of a manual sort of analog looking camera this will not disappoint you know they made some subtle changes uh, obviously not so subtle changes the resolution performance uh, increase which is most welcomed but that you know just the styling the subtle changes moving a little bit more towards photography which i think it needed to do you know hocking back to that xt3 i think it's going to be most welcomed by the majority of photographers out there obviously any of these cameras can be used by a photographer as i said before if you prefer the styling of the xh the xh range the xh2 then you know that's your that's your thing so i think fujifilm has done a really good job of creating a lot of options for people um, giving you clear sort of roles that the cameras play but not competing as much with one another uh, not sort of overlapping too much that they sort of start stepping on each other's toes each one of the cameras i just hope that the x pro 4 does come soon i think that will complete it it'll show you know that sort of whole range of options that you have in the x-series range and obviously now with the new improved sensors found in all of the bodies I really think they've taken a step in the right direction so thanks so much for your time listening to my initial impressions of the xt5 and my discussion of the whole x series range in general i appreciate the support if you like what you see here please do subscribe to my channel and like this video thanks so much and god bless